We're here today to unveil the much anticipated designs for the proposed new airport terminal building. As you know, there's a substantial amount of work going on to determine if the Bermuda government and CCC can consummate an agreement born out of an extraordinary government-to-government -government pact that would pave the way for the building of Bermuda's first purpose-built airport terminal building. The airport falls under the Ministry of Tourism, Transport and Municipalities, but as an entity it will belong to the people of Bermuda. It will be our gateway to every corner of the world. Because we are geographically such a small part of the world, travel is in our DNA. We have been defined by our ability to interact with that larger world. And the airport is crucial to the survival of Bermuda. Every man, woman, and child depends on it. We continue to operate our existing airport facilities, but they are deteriorating on a daily basis, having outlived their life expectancy many years ago. Failing to take swift and prudent action could risk compromising our reputation before the very customers who keep our island afloat economically. We must advance this project on an urgent basis if we wish to continue to attract inward investment. Prospective partners need assurance in our continuing viability as a destination. We're not just designing an airport, we're building for Bermuda's future. The designs before you today are part of a plan that will not only bring Bermuda's airport facility up to date operationally and aesthetically. The modular approach means it can adapt to future needs and further expansions such as additional gates for increased airline service. Further, we're using modern materials and technology to replace a problem structure. This is an opportunity for Bermudians to think ahead to a new era as an international tourism and business destination. Through fiscal prudence, the government has been slowly steering Bermuda away from a fiscal nightmare. Year after year, we are being forced to cut spending as we seek to raise revenue to better budget for the affairs of our country. So while all the experts tell us we urgently need to replace the terminal building, finding a way to get it built is not an easy task. My colleague, the Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance, Bob Richards, and a team of officials have been studying this public-private partnership opportunity diligently for many months. So at this time, let me turn it over to our Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance, Minister Richards. Thank you very much. This is a very good day. Uh, today, we are opening an exhibit of designs that will point to exciting future opportunities. The designs will show concepts for a much needed new airport terminal building that will leave the traveler in no doubt that they are in Bermuda. We believe that it is important that our gateway to the world is distinctive, not ostentatious, but tasteful, not competing with other destinations, but a clear indication of our own uniqueness. The exhibit of designs will spend three days, today, Friday, and Saturday, here at the Bermuda Underwater Exploration Institute to allow Bermudians living and working in the central parishes to get a true sense of the plan for a new terminal building. It will then be taken on Monday evening for a couple of hours, starting at 5.30, to the Bella Vista Bar and Grill at the Port Royal Golf Course in Southampton for residents in the West End. On Tuesday evening, again, for a couple of hours starting at 5.30, it will be at Penno's Wharf Cruise Terminal in St. George's for those in the East End. I encourage everyone to come out and meet some of the people involved and ask questions so that you can be a truly of an understanding of the unique value of the proposals and designs. The Ministry of Finance has been involved in this from the start, and I'm sure many of you have been wondering why it has not been the Minister of Public Works or the Minister of Tourism 
transport and municipalities who haven't been in the hot seat, why they have not been in the hot seat. Well, I can tell you, and I can tell you, Minister, your time will come. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is vital that we first get the financial deal that is right for Bermuda, the one that works best for us, considering our financial predicament, a predicament, by the way, that this island will face for many years to come. Once we get our fiscal house in order and stop paying out every year more than we take in, we will still need to wipe out the accumulated debt. Even against this backdrop, the need for a new airport is pressing. It has been urgent for some time. And the more I speak to Bermudians across the island, it is clear that once presented with the facts, they understand the importance of this development. One of the major hurdles for Bermuda was finding a way to pay for this crucial project. Debt is already at alarming levels, so traditional borrowing was out of the question. Finding a deal by the customary route was not feasible. Not only don't we have the money, there would be no way of controlling the escalating cost of building in Bermuda, which has been the experience in the past. After looking at this form, excuse me, after looking at this from all angles, we know this is the best way to move forward for the country. Acquiring an important and high quality asset on favorable terms while providing the breathing room to continue chipping away at the annual government deficit. To advance our interests through a useful relationship with the Canadian government. And speaking of which, I would now like to introduce our next speaker, the CEO of uh, Canadian Commercial Corporation, Mr. Martin Zablocki. I'm honored to be here this morning on behalf of the Government of Canada. As uh, Minister Richards mentioned, my name is Martin Zablocki. I'm the President and CEO of the Canadian Commercial Corporation, a special agency of the Government of Canada. Months of planning and consultations have gone into these designs for the airport that you see adorning the walls around you. And it's really a joy for us to see this finally start to bear fruit. To the ministers in attendance, especially the Honourable Minister Richards and the Honourable Minister Fay, thank you for inviting me here today to speak on behalf of the Government of Canada. Canada and Bermuda have a lengthy and storied friendship that began with a common ancestry and heritage. Today, our economy supports some $3.5 billion in two-way trade, supporting thousands of jobs in both nations. It is interesting and appropriate today to note that flights between Canada and Bermuda originally began in 1948, only two years after my corporation, the Canadian Commercial Corporation, was formed by the Government of Canada. Today, Air Canada continues to play a major role in Canada-Bermuda business tourism, serving Bermuda on a daily basis year-round. The redevelopment of L.F. Wade International Airport will build upon the collaborative relationship our countries have enjoyed for decades. These designs unveiled here today incorporate many aspects of Bermuda's rich culture and climate in its colors, shapes, and imagery. The redeveloped airport will be built by Bermudians for Bermudians. As Minister Richards and Minister Fay have identified, building for today, but also for Bermuda's future. The Government of Canada and the Canadian Commercial Corporation are proud to be a part of Bermuda's airport redevelopment project. Every CCC contract comes with a guarantee of contract performance, fully backed by the Government of Canada, a G7 nation. This guarantee provides Bermudians with the assurance that the airport will be delivered on time, on budget, and in accordance with the agreed upon terms and conditions. As part of the government to government contract, the Canadian Commercial Corporation will provide ongoing project oversight, ensuring all contract milestones are met. 
In closing, ours is a very valued relationship, and I thank you once again for allowing the Government of Canada to mark this momentous occasion in the development of a world-class international airport that Bermudians can be proud of. At this time, I'd like to invite Steve Nakin from ACON up to the podium to discuss more about the airport. Thank you. It's a real pleasure for me to be here today to mark such an extraordinary milestone in the life cycle of this airport project. My name is Steve Nakin, president of ACON Concessions, which is the development arm of ACON Group Inc. And we're a proud partner in the proposed airport redevelopment uh, project, which is being advanced under a development agreement between the governments of Canada and Bermuda. As you know, Bermuda is on the brink of a very exciting era with investment in hotel renovations and developments, the America's Cup coming next year, casinos to name just a few, and of course, a state-of-the-art airport. Over the last number of months, ACON has reached out to a vast array of stakeholders here in Bermuda, both to get to know Bermudians, their needs and perspectives better, but also for you to get to know us and what we bring to the table here in Bermuda. ACON is Canada's leading construction and infrastructure development company. We've been in business for over 130 years, 12,000 strong, and we're consistently named as one of the top employers in Canada. We're proud to have played a role in building many of Canada's iconic structures, including the CN Tower in Toronto and Toronto's Pearson International Airport. ACON's ability to deliver large, complex projects on time and on budget has made us a leader in our field. We've successfully completed many large, complicated transportation infrastructure projects, such as toll roads, transit projects, and airports, including the award-winning Quito International Airport Project, Cross Israel Toll Highway, and many others in Canada and globally. On top of that, ACON is a pioneer in delivering projects through public-private partnerships, or P3s as we call them, having delivered or being in the process of delivering dozens of infrastructure projects under that model. But it's not just about what we do. At ACON we say how we build matters. Community engagement, environmental and social responsibility and sustainability are embedded in our DNA as a company. We strive to be a good corporate citizen. As an integrated developer, investor and builder, we've seen time and time again the positive impact of infrastructure development on local economies, on employment and stimulation of future investment <coughs> and growth. And this is particularly the case with airports, which serve as powerful economic engines for a country. So we feel privileged to be part of such a significant development as your airport at this time uh, in, in the country. I'm very excited to be here today with the governments of Canada and Bermuda, officially and for the first time, to unveil the design for Bermuda's new airport terminal. This is a design that our architects and engineers, in very close collaboration with the Department of Airport Operations and its advisors, have been working on for almost a year now. Together we strive to reflect Bermuda's vision of an airport that is first class, first tier and first world and is consistent with Bermuda's global brand and identity. So now for some detail. The renderings show a larger, modern facility, intelligently designed with sustainability in mind to minimize environmental impact and maximize efficiencies. Modern conveniences commonplace in many airports, especially high-tech services, will facilitate a seamless departure and arrivals process. Other details include improved accessibility via enclosed boarding bridges, accessibility features for the disabled and the elderly, as well as employees, continued pre-clearance for U.S. Customs and Immigration, expanded commercial space for food, beverage, and retail businesses, comfortable lounges and amenities for passengers, steel and glass structure able to withstand a semi-tropical climate and, of course, hurricanes, appealing vistas of the sea, lush landscaping, and water features such as a wading pool. It's a smart, beautiful design that we are extremely proud of, and we hope you feel the same. The structure is set back and situated on higher ground to reduce flooding risk. 
It will take advantage of natural light while sheltering the space from the elements and therefore saving on energy costs. Although the airport will feature sophisticated services like automated kiosks, it will be more user-friendly for travelers of any age with a bright and open layout and universal pictograph signage. We coordinated many, many meetings with members of the Bermudian arts, culture, and architectural community to ensure we reflect Bermudian sense of place and that we adjusted the design to reflect those, that kind of feedback. Outside, the airport will feature design elements that reference classic Bermudian architecture, including sloping roof angles and triangles. Inside, lots of natural light and open space will give an airy impression and wall style to represent coral reef, the sea and sky, will immerse passers by in a marine theme. The airport forming an integral part of an uninterrupted experience of this beautiful island. Bermudian culture is on display throughout, including stylized kites and indigenous birds hanging from the ceilings, as well as other contributions from local artists. This plus swaths of vibrant colors will enhance the Bermudian feel and provide a warm and welcoming ambiance, reflective of the Bermudian way. The airport will be surrounded by lush landscaping using indigenous flora, compatible with and complementing Bermuda's ecosystem, as well as sustainable water features to create an invigorating outdoor experience that travelers can enjoy on an expansive patio. Plants will be sourced and grown on island and landfill will be repurposed from existing property. The putting green and nature trail are planned to make the airport a pleasant place to wait for flights, especially for those passengers who have to check out of their hotels early. Guests will have the option to store luggage at the airport as they make the most of their last moments on the island, to shower at the airport before they shop and dine. Throughout though, the team has worked very hard to achieve the standards required for a world-class facility within an affordability envelope, making sure at all times that the capital cost could be fully supported by private financing. The design we're unveiling today represents a shared vision, resulting from many months of collaboration and consultation with community stakeholders. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone in the community who participated in these stakeholder meetings. Our next step is to move the design to the next level and prepare for the financing phase and construction startup and to demonstrate, as we're seeing across the globe, how investing in infrastructure projects like this can help shape a destination's image and stimulate its economy. Regarding employment, there is no doubt that this airport will be a vital generator of local employment opportunities, both in construction, where we will hire local companies, and in operations where the majority of the employees will be Bermudians. As you will have seen, we have already retained several local firms to help us conduct studies and do all kinds of preliminary work. And of course, during the construction, we expect to have as many as several hundred workers on site. We're working with your Department of Workforce Development to analyze local capacity across many different trades and disciplines. With regard to airport operations, we will offer employment to all members of the DAO staff, and we expect to expand and grow that organization to meet the enhanced requirements of the project. Simply put, what this means is more permanent jobs for Bermudians. Our philosophy at ACON is to hire and train local employees and develop CSR programs such as mentorships and community engagement projects, and we plan to do so again with this project. Furthermore, when the airport is completed, it will generate additional employment over the long term, particularly through indirect jobs as a result of economic stimulation and induced benefits, and the extended aura of economic activity that always occurs around significant infrastructure projects. We also feel confident that a significant investment in airport development will send a clear signal to international investors and international tourism infrastructure investors that Bermuda means business. Today we're also excited to announce that we will be unveiling for display a scale model of the new airport terminal, which will help Bermudians to really get a visual of what the new airport terminal will look like. This model is arriving on a plane sometime today or tomorrow and will be assembled and put on display for all to see. 
Well, we won't have final cost nailed down until we get to we have all the things ironed out. Uh, the range of costs that I've announced to the public already, about 250 million, is um, still in place. Um, I don't foresee any um, major um, uh, changes from that, um, but you know, we won't know until we get to the final destination. But so, and I, I want to say, um, Brian, that these things have been going on in parallel as opposed to sequential, which your question kind of <coughs> suggested. The timing of it all, how, how closer to the end of the, of the road is it going to become? Well, we're a lot closer than we were when we started two years ago, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, and, you know, our, our objective is to break ground before the end of this year, and, and that objective still stands. The Commission of Inquiry into the um, Waters Report has said it wants to look into the um, arrangements of the uh, redevelopment plan. Um, do you find that um, a matter of concern? Is it going to hold things up? No, I don't find it a matter of concern at all. Would you be able to give them what they ask for? I don't know what they're going to ask for. Um, we uh, will give them. Uh, wet what we can give them and uh, what we cannot give them because we are contractually uh, bound by um, non-disclosure, we won't be able to give them. Um, but having said all of that, um, we have given the public already uh, more information on this project than I think that all other projects in the history of Bermuda combined, uh, particularly beforehand. Um, uh, in the past, Bermudian public but they knew nothing about projects in terms of the details. Nothing at all. They only knew the price. Um, we have bent over backwards to um, inform the Bermuda public about um, uh, what we are doing and what our obligations are. And all of the obligations of the parties have already been disclosed. So we got a lot of questions on those and um, all those questions seem to point to the fact that they haven't read the airport development agreement, which has already been made public. Are you going to put that marvelous um, documentary on television anyway? Yeah, we're going to, to uh, have it made uh, available to the Bermudian public as much as humanly possible, television, uh, CITV, online, etc. And that means public um, design exhibitions that you arranged? Yes, and also the, the exhibitions here and the East and West End, as I've already announced. Ciola. Um, you mentioned that a scaled model was arriving today or tomorrow. It will be put together and displayed. Where is it going to be displayed? I think it's going to initially be displayed here. Um, and then it will move around. Yeah, hopefully. I understand it's quite heavy, but uh, it's <laughs> going to be moved around. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, also, I heard quite often the word sustainability and the factors that were considered. I'm just wondering, with the move towards clean energy, um, any thought to solar energy to power some of the things mm -hmm. at this new facility, considering the fact that we also have very high electricity bills in the um, I'll answer that. Um, <coughs> uh, one of the features of um, this project is that <coughs> the government is going to subsidize the electricity bill but the offset of that is that we are going to have a solar power facility um, on the finger uh, in the airport facility. And so that won't be plugged directly into the airport terminal because, you know, airport operates at night. <laughs> but we're going to plug that into the, um, into the, uh, into the grid, and uh, we'll get a lot of sustainability out of that. Uh, it's going to take 40 months to construct. My second question was uh, about the opposition from certain quarters to this project. How do you go about persuading those still opposed to this project of its value? And, and how important is it that you do that? Uh, I think it's important. Um, you have to operate on the assumption that some folks are going to oppose it no matter what. Uh, and, um, but uh, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing. Um, we've been talking to uh, smaller groups uh, about this project and 
Um, I mean, just give you an example. Um, in the last two days, I've made three presentations to different groups, um, myself and um, with the help of people from uh, CCC and ACON. Um, and we'll be continuing to do that um, through the summer and into the fall. Anybody who wants to, um, you know, who wants to have a nice conversation about this, uh, we're quite happy to um, uh, oblige. And just one follow-up question. Um, you said it's going to take 40 months to build, and the proposed groundbreaking is still this summer. Yes. And to the average guy mm -hmm. in construction in particular who's hungry for a job, what, what do you say to him how long before he could be working? Well, I think um, I, I'm not an expert on the construction yeah. stuff, but it clearly wants <laughs> Oops. Really, once ground is broken, um, the opportunities for employment uh, will start, uh, and um, um, it's a complex job. And so, there will be uh, very, very significant opportunities for uh, uh, new employment in for for people in the construction industry in Bermuda. So, so we're still talking about working before Christmas, then, uh, or by Christmas? By Christmas, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have I I I often been involved in any other labor? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th this project has has sort of undergone the broadest and most extensive consultation exercise of any that we've probably done as a company, including all the stakeholders that are that we require to make sure the design is going to work for them. That includes IATA, that includes the airlines, customs and immigration, all the different uh, agencies, and really the users of this airport have all been part of the planning uh, to make sure that the requirements are satisfactory to all of them. The IR are very pleased with the idea, aren't they? Absolutely. And is the area of the dump being looked at at this opportunity? Um, that's something separate, although I, I appreciate the question because it's an eyesore and it's an eyesore that the government is aware of and um, I guess the, 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 the real um, scoundrel in this is going to have to be um, my colleague, the Minister of Public Works, is going to have to do something about that. Um, so, so um, uh, but I, I have heard that question on several occasions uh, up to yesterday, and uh, it certainly we're fully aware that th that is something that has to be dealt with. And the government still actively looking at uh, remedies for the causeway? Uh, yes, um, we understand that causeway is an issue. Um, Anybody who's lived in Bermuda for the last 10 years knows that. Um, like this airport project, uh, we won't proceed with the uh, remediation of the causeway until we can find a financial model that works for Bermuda and the Bermuda government. All of these things hinge on um, a sustainable financial solution. And we haven't found a financial solution for the airport yet, for, excuse me, for the causeway yet. Um, but we're still searching for one. 